Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Auto Trail Tribute F60. So as we walk around the vehicle, the first point you get to on the driver's side of the vehicle is the mains connectivity point. So to hook your vehicle up, you get your hooker blade, lift the collar, hook the vehicle first, then hook your sight and obviously do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead. And then you've got a small key here which unlocks and locks this wheel flap which is your fresh water intake behind here. So you go and get a hose pipe, put your hose pipe in there and either fill until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel. And then should you be draining down for the winter um, you've taken on any contaminated water or you want to just drain the vehicle down of water just open here and this is your fresh water drain your wastewater drain is just in the front here underneath the hookup so this is anything you put down a plug hole again in the winter it's very important that you drain this off as well because it's just plastic tanks and plastic pipes and you don't want anything to freeze so you just open that so that's your waste that's your fresh and there you have your flue for your boiler lpg liquid petroleum gas so all your lockers open with the round headed key including the habitation door and in here you can fit two six kilogram propane bottles and you tie them in with the straps provided when the bottle's on board permanently. Turn on and off at the top of the bottle and you get the pigtail on. On this one it's just a hand tighten so no need for a spanner. Opposite thread so left to tighten, right to loosen and then turn on and off. Obviously turned off when you're travelling and on when you're on a site. Coming round the vehicle. At the back you've got your high level brake light and reverse camera. And you've got the bars here where the back panel has been strengthened to take weight of a bike rack. And in here you've got your cassette. So we lift here, make, ensure the blade's closed first. Lift the small blue clip, slide the cassette out. Take the blue cap off the toilet. Press the blue button and empty. Once you've emptied at your chemical waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside your toilet block, you put some water in via the spout, give it a rinse and empty again. And if you're using the blue or the green chemical, a cap full, straighten it here and it's good to go back in the vehicle. If you're using the tablets, you open the blade, you put a pint of water in and then you'd put a tablet into here. You do also have some wheels there so you can drag it around when it's full so you're not having to carry it and then that would just slide and clip back in got some storage area here so there's your hooker blade and then you've got your some cables for the vehicle which are all covered up got a shelf so you can either have the shelf up or down depending on what you have in here You've got your wheel external barbecue point here. So this works off the bottle on board. So all you need is a gas spigot, which will be supplied with the vehicle. Um, but you will have to buy some gas hosing. So that's the orange hosing and some Jubilee clips. So you'd connect the spigot in there, connect your hose to either your Kadak or your external awning heater or whatever gas appliance you want to use then you can turn on and off here and it'll run off the bottle on board instead of carrying another bottle for the barbecue. We've got a high level awning light, two fridge vents, the doors on the centre locking as well so you just press to open the cab, lock to all the doors then press the back one to open the habitation door and under here this is underneath the seat so you've got your tool kit for the Ford so jack and a brace and a torn eyes in there and then underneath this panel here is your leisure battery so you've got a 100 amp hour banger leisure battery and then these two fuses here are 20 amp so these are your main battery fuse so if you ever get 12 volt failure 
check these fuses as well just to make sure that you haven't blown the main battery fuse. On the front passenger door of the transit that this is based on, you've got your capless diesel filler, so you just push your diesel filler in there till it and it'll fill with fuel. And then below, because it's a new styled Euro 6 engine, it's got add blue. So the add blue on the transit's about 17 litres. And you'll get a warning light on the dash when it needs add blue. It'll just say add blue level range. It'll come up with a range. It normally counts down from about a thousand miles. If you top it up as soon as the light comes on, because if you let let it go low or you let it go empty, obviously if it goes empty, the engine won't start. If it goes too low, it will go into limp mode, which is 50 mile an hour max speed. But you can get add blue in the cat in the jerry cans from most um, car shops four quarts or you can buy it at the petrol station on the pumps. To turn your seats, there's a little half bar there, so all you need to do is pull your seats forward, little half bar, that'll turn the passenger and driver seat into the rear, give you extra seating space. We've got a lockable glove box with the key there as well. And then if we just have a look around the front, put your key in here for the being a Ford, turn to the left hand side which pops the bonnet, turn to the right which releases the bonnet, and then under here, so you've got all your fluids, you've got your screen wash, your brake fluid, your oil filler, and your yellow dipstick, your radiator coolant, then should you need to jump start, positives underneath this cap here and then you'd earth off the engine hoist which is just here. Then you've got your weight plate here, so go off this plate, weight plate, not the Ford Transit weight plate on the passenger door because it's now been changed to a motorhome, before it could have been anything. So it's three and a half ton, gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on and tow with this, you can tow an extra ton behind you. So your train weight, which is the motorhome and whatever your tow can't exceed four and a half ton. Located just inside the habitation door is your electric step switch. So this will automatically retract when the engine is started. But when the engine stopped or you want to get in and out the vehicle, you can just press this button. It'll take it in and then press it again. It'll bring it out. Got a fly screen on the door and I've got a blackout blind for on in the evening. So when you come in the vehicle, above the fridge is all your 12 volt control panel. So if you're hooked up you will have mains electric, which is which will work all three pin plugs. Should you not, you'll just be using your 12 volt of your leisure battery. So you turn the vehicle on and off at the top and then below. You've got your master switch for all your lights, which are all then individually switched. And below the light switch, you have the pump. So should you be using the tap, the toilet or the shower, you must put this on as this pressurizes the water. And then to the other side at the top, you've got your owner light, which is your light outside the vehicle above the habitation door. And then you can just press through and it'll scroll through the menu. So if I to start from the front, so Sergeant Unit EC363 control panel, that's just the name of the control panel. Then you click again, it says leisure battery is 13.3 volts and charging. That tells you you're hooked up. Should you take the hook about, it'll give a true reading of how full the battery is. You've got vehicle battery of 12.9 volts, which is saying good. And you've got fresh, you've got water tank levels, so you've got fresh 50 and waste zero. And then you always select the active battery. So select battery is the leisure. You always want that to run the motorhome and never the vehicle, as you could flatten the Ford engine battery. Then you won't be getting anywhere. And then you can set timers and it'll tell you the internal and external temperature. Above you've got the new styled wheel heat air system. So you just wave your hand over to activate them that'll wake them up you've got little reset buttons here so should you get a warning trying like a warning exclamation mark down the side you just press these two little buttons at the bottom 
and then you've got the gas so this is the heat that's the water so you've got the gas here so on blue it's on standby and then when the gas is fed to it it'll go to orange which means it's activated you've got your temperature here so all the way is 30 degrees and then opposite that you've got the electric side so you can have the gas and electric on together so the gas would just be for while camping but you can have it on together when it's cold it'll obviously heat the vehicle far quicker and with the water it'll reduce the heating time of the water it takes so all you need to do is press so you've got one little dot which is one kilowatt you've got two and you've got three kilowatts so just depending on what the site gives you you can choose which source available and then across from the heat you've got the water so you have the water all the way down to heat which is at the bottom which is just plus so you've got either half which is 40 or full which is 60 degrees of your water and then again like you've seen there the electrics just went orange there that means it's active so it's on one kilowatt you've got two like and you've got three kilowatts so it all depends on what current you're getting through your hookah bleed which you can use your electric and again when it's really hot when it's really cold sorry you can use the gas and electric together by just turning the gas on or if you're wild camping and you're in a field in the middle of nowhere you will just have to use your gas to heat your vehicle and your electric and and your electric water heater so what you need to do so there is a separate video on this on our channel how to operate the wheel heat air where it goes in a bit more in depth we'll keep it nice and simple so we'll just tell you how to turn it on and off and reset the water heater should it fail so you've got heating and hot water below you've got your bed so you, you turn on and off here and you've got your bed so turn it on which is horizontal and press and the bed will come down to the level we've got this little tie on there just to keep the canvas from getting trapped and the seat belts these clip up here and it's just nets on both sides so if you're putting young children up there they don't roll in the car or out in the sleep or if not they can just be tucked up underneath the bed and the ladder is in the is in the garage so that would just clip on there to gain access so to operate your Feckford styled fridge so you've got a large fridge there with a freezer box and obviously when you finish with it in the winter you'll want to clean it out take all your remaining items out of there and then the last thing you want to do is shut the door as it forms an airtight seal so everything will just get all that air will be trapped in there it'll get smelly and mouldy so what you need to do is this little blue lever here you just flip that into the middle just and then slowly shut the door it stops the door from shutting fully on itself and allows air circulation in and out so now I want to how to operate it so you turn on and off at this square button here and then you've got this square button in the middle of the two arrows which changes the source so at the moment it says A which is automatic energy selection so the brain of the fridge knows what source it needs to be on so at the moment we're hooked up and we'll have our gas on and it's automatically went to hook up as it's designed to not waste the gas should I take the hook about now it would switch over to gas automatically or should I start the engine it would switch over to the battery setting which isn't off your leisure battery it's a feed from your engine battery off the alternator which is designed to keep the temperature at the same temperature it was at when you departed so if you're lucky enough to keep this at home and you've pre-chilled it two days before you've put your shop then your shopping's nice and cool and fresh on automatic it'll automatically go into the battery setting or if you're traveling from site to site obviously it's designed to keep your shopping nice and fresh until you re-hook up or you turn on the gas note that on the automatic it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas this is just a safety feature as if you want to pull into a four quarter fill with fuel obviously you'll not be finding electric hookup 
you'll not be finding 12 volt because you've just knocked the engine off and if you've left your gas open it will find gas but it's designed to wait 20 minutes and then if you just press to manually change you just press until it starts flashing use the arrows so they want to hook up you just press ok and it'll ask you what temperature you want to be at if you stop if you pre chilling you want it at full but then once you put shopping in you want to turn it down one or two just so it doesn't freeze the shopping and then that's lit on electric hookup on its own and then you've got if you keep going you've got battery that's failed because it's gone to red because the engine's not running so just look out for that red one and then if you go again that's on the gas there now and you can turn off and on from the square button Stored next to your fridge is your storeway table, so you've got a freestanding table there which is just like putting an ironing board up, the legs just fold up. That can go in the front or if it's a lovely day outside you can have that outside. And then you've got a small little locker here to store little bits and pieces in there as well. Above you've got a TV point, so you can stand your telly in here or you can get You've got a 12 volt and you've got a TV aerial. In the kitchen, you've got three gas rings. So if you have had the gas off for a while and you want to know why the fridge or the boiler or the water heater won't light on gas, always bring it through on the hob first and then below you've got your you've got your oven there at the back and you've got your grill so you may want to take these out when travelling and then always make sure that the flat side of the oven shelf goes to the front and the rounded shape goes to the back. You've got storage to the side of the oven. Underneath is where your water pump lives. So you turn this off, off and on from the control panel and this obviously pressurises your water so that's where all the vibration will come from. Obviously it's pumping the water through and you've got a small filter on there. And then in this one, you've got storage, but you've got your built-in cutlery tray. So then once you put your water pump on, on the tap, you'll be able to, on your control panel, the tap will work. So let's see, then you've got hot water there. And cold water. In the cupboard above, the kitchen area, you've got your solar panel regulator here, so it's charging your leisure battery or your vehicle battery depending on what you want. So there's a little rocker switch here, so off's in the middle, so it's three way. Up is to the vehicle battery and down is to the leisure battery, so you can choose which battery you're sending the charge to. But it's only as good as the round thing in the sky, so obviously in the summer it'll work brilliantly in the winter. It'll work, but it'll not work to a good advantage because obviously we don't have the best sun in this in the winter time. And then you do have storage throughout. In the washroom, which is across the back of the vehicle, you've got your shower. So when winterizing, I would advise taking the shower head off the shower hose, as you can see there, it's got quite a big loop in it. Allow the hose to lie down. Obviously the waste and the fresh will be open from outside, so any water that gains in here, that dribbles out there, will just dribble out the side of the van. You've got your shower screens, so they just need, there's a little turnbuckle on there for when you're traveling to stop them moving, but they'll just connect on there by a magnet. Your sink plugs, just a push plug. Got toiletry cabinet up here. 
complimentary bottle of blue for your toilet. And some more space there. And then in here, this is your wardrobe. So you've got your boards for your front bed, which I'll get onto in a moment. So that's where they store away. So there's two, there's a hinged one and there's a smaller one. You've got your carpets. You've got your silver screens, which are just suction. So they just suck from the inside of the windscreen and side windows on the Ford cab to black it out. You've got a fire extinguisher and you've got your ladder, which is in there as well. You'll also notice in the, the top right corner, you've got your tele booster. So you've got a little wheel, it's a fixed aerial, but you've got a little wheel on here, a little black wheel dial that you can turn. So this mins and max the booster, which is the amplifier. So should you be struggling or should you be getting too strong of a signal, you can turn that on and off. So up and down, which will give, obviously gives it more or less for the signal. To operate the toilet, so it's a Fedford toilet, so again, ensure the pump's on, press the blue button. You'll be able to flush the toilet, like so. So always flush before use, which lubricates the blade. And then what you want to do is use this grey handle slide to the right. Use the toilet with the blade open, obviously flush after use, then slide to the left, which shuts the blade and obviously keeps everything in the cassette. When this little dial here, it'll start moving to red. Obviously when it goes fully to red, it means the cassette's full and requires to be emptied and then topped up with chemical. And your skylight above, so you've got a little skylight here. So what you can do is you can have it open any way you want, so you just push one side open should the wind be coming from the front or should it be coming from the back, you can open the front or if you want to open it together, you can open it together or you can have it side to side depending on where the wind is coming from and that will give you ventilation should you've used a shower. Underneath your drop down bed, you've got your lockers here, so the three kilograms in all the lockers just because of the bed mortar. You've got your unique build number which is obviously unique to each vehicle auto trail build so if you have any parts or warranty claim that's the number you quote. You've got your solenoids for your bed but you've also got a resettable fuse. So on the end of the fuse I should say in the middle it's a 15 amp there's a little black little button so you just push that so should you go for your bed switch which is obviously above your fridge and the bed not move and you think why is it not working when the key's on if you just come and obviously reset the fuse it'll then start the start the motor operating so the bed goes up and down but you've obviously got to make sure that the bed that the light switch is on as well for the bed to work as that's the way it's wired if you were traveling and you had the extra two passengers in the back, you'd lift this cushion out and then underneath there's just a board which would just slide out and it would give you foot space for both passengers. So that would just slide out like so. And then you put that in the wardrobe at the back, out of the way, and there you have, you can use your two traveling seats and you would take the cushions off the back as well. So to make the bed space up, so the bottom double bed. You'd remove your backrest first on the side facing seats. Slide this forward and then underneath you have a leg which will drop down. So you've got your leg for support. Slide this forward and then there's a board on the back. So if you turn the turnbuckle that will then lie in that space there and your backrest will go behind and then with this space what you've got to do is on here this slides forward the roll on press studs so just make sure the press studs being 
disconnected so everything can slide forward and back. And then the smaller board would go in here. This would this would slide forward. So you don't before you put this board in there, you slide that forward into the front space, put your board in. I'll just jump out the way. So that would come forward. The big board from the back would come forward. That just needs to slot underneath there. Like so. so there you are. And then what you do is there's another board, which is the one that's so you find the two in the wardrobe. That would just sit in the back like that. You put the base cushions on here. This space here is a slim space which is where the infill cushion goes so that will just go in there and then the backrest again make sure you pull your press studs off that will just go in there and then that spare cushion will just get out the way and there you have a double bed beneath your drop down bed so just behind the driver's seat Slide this one forward, this is where your EC176 power supply unit is. So you've got your system shut down here, which will isolate all the battery, so the leisure battery in the winter months, but obviously it will turn the head unit off and the rear view camera as it's all wired through here. So if you ever get into it and think, why is my reverse camera not working, or my radio and you've pressed this button off when having the vehicle stood up for the winter, that's why. You've got all your 12 volt fuses which are listed, so they're just standard blade fuses, so it would be a good idea to carry some spares. And you've got your RCD and MCB trips on mains 240 hookup. And then located underneath your double diner travelling seat at the back. So at the back you do have all your gas taps. So if there's any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe. So there's four here, so these are for the boiler the water heater and your hob and your cooker. There's two underneath the fridge, obviously for your fridge and your barbecue point. But down here, obviously your boiler and your water heater is underslung underneath the vehicle as it's a wheel water heater. This yellow tap here, when it's across the vehicle, the boiler is holding 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter you don't want this water to freeze as there's no warranty that covers frost damage. So what you need to do is you need to turn it to the front of the vehicle, point it to the cab and it will drain the 10 litres of water off directly underneath the chassis. Come in with no power and do that so don't try and put the pump on when doing that otherwise it tries to replenish the water that's pumping out. Leave it open during the time you've got the vehicle in storage or stood up in the winter. Open all the taps, take your shower head off, obviously open the fresh and the waste outside and then when you come to reuse it, obviously shut all the taps, shut your boiler, shut your fresh and your waste, fill with water via a hose pipe that comes in here. Go to your control panel, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get automatic cold water, go to the hot side, it will cough, split down. What it's doing is it's drawing the 10 litres of air out of the tank until the water fills and once one tap's pressurised, do them all and then you're ready for the season. But obviously make sure that this is facing the front and all the water's left out because it isn't covered under frost. Frost damage isn't covered under warranty, it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle off. So to operate the 4G Wi-Fi system, so on the roof of the vehicle is an antenna and this is a docking station. So what you need to do is Remo remove it to put the SIM card in. So what I'd do is go to your main phone provider and just say you need a data only SIM card. 
you can get unlimited for about £20 a month. Put the SIM card into here underneath the battery. Obviously put the battery back in. You'll notice on the white sticker here that there's a code for your Wi-Fi. So this is the code you put into your devices to pair with. Pop it back on, turn it on from the front. See this is going to say it's got no SIM in because it doesn't at the moment. But then what you do is you'd look for Hawaii on your phones and pair with it. It'll tell you how many devices are paired with it on the front but you're best off getting unlimited or as much internet as you can as if you're going to use it for streaming on your telly or your iPads you'd need unlimited to stream with but the aerial on the roof the antenna will maximize that 4G signal to 10 times what you get on your phone so you should be able to get a signal wherever you are So now in the cab, which is based on a Ford Transit Mark 8, you've got your handbrake to your left, or should I say to your right, sorry. And then obviously on the door, you've got your electric windows. And then to lock the cab door on an evening, and it'll also lock the habitation door, you just press this button here on the doors for the padlock and then unlock to lock and unlock the cab and habitation door you've got your mirror adjustment which does the two top mirrors only the bottom which is your blind spot has got to be manually moved you've got your lights here so I would just what I would do is just leave them on automatic then you've got your headlight adjustment front and rear fogs and then when the headlights are on you can dim and brighten the instrument cluster here should it be too dim or too bright for you driving in the dark. Wipers, indicators, cruise control, speed limiter, and then you would just press up to set, cancel, and then obviously in the res is just resume. So if you've had your speed limiter on or you've had your cruise control on and you've had to brake or cancel it you can just press resume and it'll resume to the last speed it was set at put your volume and your mute these little buttons here will scroll through your heads up display so you split display in the middle so you've got a digital speedometer instant fuel usage distance to empty which is your range average fuel usage how many miles you've done on trip one and then they start stop. If you go to the buttons here on the far right, you can go down to driver assistance where that's where hill start assist is always active. You've got maintenance, so this is where you can check your oil level, your blue level, which is five and a half thousand miles, and it says no fill required. Obviously, with the oil that's going off Ford's. Um, recommendations obviously with it being a Ford Transit base but it needs serviced every year along with the habitation service to keep your warranties with six speed manual gearbox with lift in the collar in reverse which brings up the reverse camera on the XN head unit you've got your mode here so you can have done normal or eco I will just, just leave it on normal there's no benefits to eco and then you can turn your traction control off here. Got your temperature, so you can have it on hot or cold. And obviously, if you have it on max on the DMS settings for in the winter, or max on the aircon for in the summer. Fan speed this side, put your on and off, heated mirrors, obviously, max for the screen. Heated front windscreen with a being a Ford, so it's got the quick clear windscreen. Then you've got where you want your air to go to, so your face or your footwells, and whether you're recirculating it within the vehicle or bringing fresh air in, just turn that on and off. And then you've got your aircon there. Hazards got a USB for the head unit and a 12 volt. This turns your stop start on and off, so whether you want it active or, or not active. 
obviously do take in mind that your start stop will only work if there's sufficient charge in the engine battery so if it's been stood up for a couple of weeks or a couple of months then don't expect the stop start to work straight away the battery will have to charge itself by giving it a run before the stop start comes in and out and to use your XN head unit so you've got your main home screen there so you've got navigation in the top left hand corner brings on a map of where you are go to the bottom right and then go to new route you go to address and then you've got three bars on the middle bar you can put in a town or a postcode and then you go to go to town so if we just say London go to town set as destination then it'll calculate the route Once it's calculated the route, it'll give you your ETA on time of arrival. So it's giving you ETA. So it's 278 mile. And it's given a, a time of arrival of 5:26 p.m., which is a five-hour and 16-minute journey. If you did want to cancel this off, you would just go back and just press it end route ok and then going back to the menu you've got radio which is FM and AM or you've got DAB so I would just use it off DAB but then obviously if you can't get DAB anyway you can obviously put FM on what you do is go to list you've got all your national stations you've got your regional time and where you've got your BBC stations so you just press on the folders open them up and they'll give you your stations that are available find your favorite stations and then you can press one to six to save them in preset you can connect to Bluetooth so to connect your Bluetooth you go on your device and find accent on your phones it'll come up here when you're searching it'll come up with Callum's iPhone or whoever searching and you just press pair press pair on the head unit it'll pop up on your phone do you want to pair with this device press pair and then it'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts so just press allow and then it'll download your phone book then whoever rings you it'll come up with a name if they're saved otherwise if it's just a normal call with an unknown number it'll just come up with a number then you'll be able to press media on the music icon here and, it, and you can use your Bluetooth audio to stream your music through the head unit because it doesn't take a CD. Going along, obviously USB connection is there for USB which will bring on iPod. You can have your camera on when going forward by just pressing camera and it works as a rear view camera but then you've got to turn that on and off to obviously get into the other functions of the head unit. And then if you go to set up you can sort all your audio, balance out, your screen brightness, so you can brighten the screen, camera, and then if you go to other, so with this head unit you can get free updates from the Accent website, which this model is an, F, an XF280 on the Ford. You go on to X, Accent updates, download it on it with USB stick, pop it in here, then you would just press load software. And, it, and then you press the tick and it'll load the latest version should you have downloaded the, the latest version and this head unit's running V 2.4 but you can update them so you'll know when to update it when it gets a bit slow or a bit glitchy and um, it just means it just needs an update and that's how we operate your Accent head unit Did you feel my and your little chip for your GPS goes in the side there, so just in the side towards the driver's steering wheel. And then to black the carb out, like I've said, they're in the wardrobe. You just, they've got suction cups and you just suck them on to the, so there'll be three blinds, there'll be two carb windows and there'll be a windscreen, which you just suck to the windscreen. 
to black out on an evening.